documentary. We gave a coronavirus update. We talked about Carl Malone's bet your ass a little bit. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm surprised so, you didn't go into Michael Jordan's bet your ass. <laughs> well, Carl Malone's for a different reason. Yes. You know? Wait for you. So, uh, we're going to talk about the toughest uh, subject of the day. Um, oh, probably. Something we shouldn't. The, the most recent past, really. Like, we all have been dealing with coronavirus for a while, but this this last week mm. was extremely, and, and still ongoing. Yeah. Uh, you know, you just heard my neighbor say, you know, a threat got called into the mall. Uh, yeah. mm. So, it's rough, man. Yeah. So, um, what, what we're talking about is uh, George Floyd. Now, if you uh, haven't been watching since the beginning, we kind of summed it a little bit. George Floyd was the uh, gentleman that was killed in Minneapolis. The cop put his uh, knee on So, even go back. So, okay. the, so, the call came in. Um, apparently, the store owner alleged that he was passing a, a fake $20 bill. That was, that was the extent of it. Right. Now, um, apparently... Uh, there was like a verbal argument mm -hmm. and, and, and then the arrest happened they put him in the car I guess and kind of roughed him up in the car pulled him out of the car threw him down mm -hmm. um, three officers there was, there was one placing handcuffs on him the other was holding his legs mm -hmm. and then this third cop uh, Devin whatever the hell I don't know his whole name um, put his foot at an angle on his neck mm -hmm. to follow the line where obviously, you know, uh, if, if you don't know the medical terms, your jugular vein is there. You, that gets cut. There's an extreme chance that you're, you're, you're going to die. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, your esophagus, throat, all that stuff is there. So to, um, you know, inhibit the, the jugular as well as literally putting crushing pain on uh, somebody's esophagus and throat. I don't know whether they, the, the medical examiner or whoever claimed that, you know, he may have had pre-existing conditions, but I can guarantee that your pre-existing conditions are going to be exacerbated by having a foot on your neck or a knee in your neck for nine minutes. Well, the one thing I want to say is, you know, and this is something for people who are Biden fans that want to, you know, support him or whatever. I think people should write into him, you know, or any law, anybody that can affect the law and make it a law where it's once a gentleman is cuffed, once you take him down to the ground, okay. And, and there might be some eye resistant where you have to use force. But once they're cuffed, the threat is eliminated. There's no threat then. It should be a law that once somebody's cuffed, you either put them in the car. Go ahead. That's not technically true. Okay. You still have feet. You still have guys that will spit and okay. stuff like that. Yeah. So, okay. So in that respect, I get what you're saying. Yeah. But just to, as somebody that's put people in handcuffs before, mm -hmm. there's a lot more than just... There, it's not over. Just Fa because. Fair enough. But... You, you could have took your knee off his neck. Oh, okay. first of all, your knee should have never been on your neck. There's right. been dozens, I mean, to their credit, dozens of police officers that said there's no type of training where that's ever taught. Right. Even when you have your knee on a suspect's back, like the small of his back here, right. you, the pressure should be on your foot, mm -hmm. meaning you won't be leaned. Right. Your knee shouldn't be into him. Mm -hmm. It's as a stabilizer, mm -hmm. but your foot is where the balance is. Yeah. So the pressure is on the back of your foot, mm -hmm. not pushing down. Because mm -hmm. even even that, so say I put my foot here, your heart's right under here. So mm -hmm. putting that amount of pressure is going to crush stuff into your heart. So it still can kill you. Right. So um, I, there's one thing that's <laughs> kind of been on my heart to say um, since this whole thing happened. Um, We've dealt with this, and by we, I mean black people. I want to be very specific. We black people have been dealing with uh, injustice, police brutality for a number of years, a long time. Mm -hmm. 
at this point, if you think it's going to change on its own, you are a fool. So what I want to say is that if you are black, you need to go out and you need to arm yourself. You need to arm yourself, you need to get your concealed carry license so that you can stay armed. And you need to operate, you know, as much, you need to operate within the confines of the law so that those guns that you arm yourself with are not taken away, okay? You need to get your concealed carry because open carrying, even in states that is legal, can cause a problem because now you see somebody with a gun, oh, he has a gun or... You know, he's a threat, and every cop can come up to you and check and see if you're a prohibited person from owning a firearm. If you're concealed, they don't know you have it on you. But marching, protesting, when all this is over, okay, police brutality might stop for a minute or not, might not happen for a while. Give it time, it will happen again. History has been constantly repeating itself. Voting for somebody is not going to stop police brutality. Um, it's almost to the point you got to take it in your own hands and you have to arm yourself. Um, this is where we are now, you know, and you hate to say it like that. And I'm not telling anybody to go out and shoot somebody or anything like that, but tearing up your own neighborhood, is not going to help. Matter of fact, what I wish people had done because this cop, they posted his name and his address right, online. They went straight to his house. Go to his community. They did. They right. went straight to his house. They surrounded his house. They burnt down the police station in Minneapolis. Yeah, yeah they... Yeah, tear up their community. Mm -hmm. Tear up their community. And maybe they'll get the message. Us tearing our own shit up isn't going to send any message. Um, That's what they wait for. Yeah. And yeah, look at these fools. Yeah, I understand the anger. And I understand people react out of anger. I do it sometimes. I get it. You know, but, but we got to do something more than that. But seriously, at this point, if you're black and you're not arming yourself and you have the ability to do so legally, you are a fool at this point. So that's what I want to say to y'all. Go arm yourselves. Protect yourself. You have a right to protect yourself. You know, and me personally, I'd rather go out fighting than go out just laying on the ground. With some dude's knee on my neck. On my neck, yeah. You know, and, and that might sound extreme to some. If it sounds extreme to you, cool. You do what you do. This is for me. So I'm going to read a little bit of Joe Biden's statement about okay. this. These last few days have laid bare that we are a nation furious at injustice. Every person of conscience can understand rawness of the trauma people of color experience in this country from the daily indignities to the extreme violence like the horrific killing of George Floyd. Protesting such brutality is right and necessary. It's an utterly American response, but burning down communities and needless destruction is not. Violence that endangers lives is not. Violence that guts and shudders businesses that serve the community is not. The act of protesting should never be allowed to overshadow the reason we protest. It should not drive people away from the just cause that protest is meant to advance. I know that there are people all across the country who are suffering tonight, suffering the loss of a loved one to intolerable circumstances like the Floyd family or to the virus that's gripping our nation. Suffering economic hardships, whether due to COVID-19 or entrenched inequalities in our system. And I know that a grief that dark and deep may be at times too heavy to bear. I also know the only way to, to bear it is to turn all that anguish into purpose. So tonight I ask all of America in, to join me, not in denying our pain or covering it over, but to use it to compel our nation across this turbulent threshold into the next phase of progress, inclusion, and opportunity for our great democracy. We are a nation in pain, but must not allow this pain to destroy us. We are a nation enraged, but cannot allow our rage to consume us. We are a nation exhausted, but we will not allow our exhaustion to defeat us. As president, I will help lead this conversation. More importantly, I will listen. I'll keep the commitment I made to George's brother, I don't know how to pronounce his name, that George will not just be a hashtag. We must and will get to a place where everyone, regardless of race, believes that to protect and serve means to protect and serve them. Only by standing together will we rise stronger than before, more equal, more just, more hopeful, and that much closer to our per perfect union. 
Yeah. Okay. So let me say this. And uh-huh. as a side note, he went to Wilmington this morning. Okay. And was talking to people down in, in, in Wilmington. Let, let me let me say this, and and I don't want to get too political because we, we try not to do politics much on this show. Um, that's a nice speech. However, Biden, you know, regardless of how you feel about him or whatever, I feel like he takes opportunities. And this, because in that speech, everything was fine to me until he said, well, when I'm president, you know, I'll, uh, whatever, I can't quote it, I don't remember exactly. Right. How As president, I will lead this yeah. discussion, blah, 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 blah. You know, And I, I get exactly what you're saying. Yeah. But at the same time, he's a man that has to win an election. The, look at the other side's response. Look at Trump's response. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean... Like, so that all in itself, if if you're a fan of getting this other dude out of office, I applaud him for keeping his foot on the gas. Mm. I don't think he should take his foot off the brake. Mm. I'm glad that it was a final small little snippet at the end where the most was focused on everything else. Mm-hmm. Just a small snippet, I'm cool with that. He didn't talk about himself, he didn't talk about president, the entire length of everything that I just read. That's true. Until he got to the very end. Mm-hmm. And yes, I'm okay with that little plug because you want people to be like, okay, this is what I want in a leader. Mm-hmm. Not, oh boy, that was bad. It looked look really rough, which is essentially what Trump tweeted out. Mm. Besides his threats, mm. you loot, we shoot. Direct quote. You know, that's also a quote from a police chief. From I'm sure. Before. Yeah. I'm sure. A racist police chief, by the way. And you loot, we shoot. That's the response. Yep. So mm-hmm. I just on his tweets um, yesterday afternoon, I believe. He said tonight will be a MAGA night at the White House because there were protesters there the night before. Mm. So he was inviting mm. the whole MAGA crew mm. to come and have this confrontation. That's right. like inciting a race war. Like, mm. that's what you want? But that's what they've been doing. That That's the whole point. What this guy did, this police officer, knowing that what we already been through, okay, with uh, Philando Castile, uh, I forget the was that not in Minnesota Sterling too? Brown. That was in Minnesota, Philando Castile. With all of this going on, Sandra Bland and the many more victims there has been. With all this going on, you still had the audacity, the nerve, the ego to do this and think that you were going to be okay. Because see, that's the only reason the police do this. If you don't, if you don't know, the only reason the police do this is because they believe that they can get away with it. Okay. And to no fault of their own, because here's the thing. It's they just do like get a child. With it. That, exactly. It's <laughs> that just like a child. If the child touched the stove, it doesn't burn them. They have no reason not to touch it. Once they get burned, then you fall back. So I know you better. No it's a bully. Back. Take bullies. I, yeah. I said this on Facebook the other day. Mm-hmm. If you tell a bully, you know what? That hurt my feelings when he punched me in the mouth. Mm-hmm. He's going to punch you in the mouth again. Okay. Yeah. And again. Mm-hmm. And again. And, and that's why I, I, I put on Facebook I agree with the whole Les Martin or Malcolm mm-hmm. well because obviously obviously mm. there was some change mm. as a result of the civil rights movement right but if they're still killing black and white men with no dis no regard mm. ain't that much change because they haven't learned that if they get punched back in the face well Martin, this even, hurt. you talk about more Martin, uh, excuse me, less Martin, more Malcolm. Martin had even said, I think, in one of his last speeches before he was killed, he said he believes he led his people astray uh, in the sense of the nonviolence uh, uh, act or what have you, because that was Martin's whole approach was the nonviolence. Mm-hmm. I think Martin kind of saw at the end that nonviolence wasn't working. You understand? That was the goal. You would hope everything could be uh, handled peacefully. You understand? But as we've seen, we've been marching since when? All those people do when you march is say, okay. We see you. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) When is this going to be over, right? It's going to be done soon. Mm -hmm. 
and then it is done soon. Mm -hmm. There might be an odd person here or there that 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 has a shirt and and, and says remember Sandra Bland or remember Trayvon mm -hmm. or something. It's mm -hmm. the odd person. But mm -hmm. as a general rule, that shit gets forgotten so quickly. Yeah. And people won't remember George Floyd from this now. They're gonna remember the rioting that came about after the fact. Mm -hmm. I think some people will, but I, I No, I, I mean saying. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm saying yes, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Some people do. Mm -hmm. Some people stick stay on that. Mm -hmm. And and, and that's just who they are. Mm -hmm. But as a general rule, for the general public, most of those protesters, you won't see or hear any type of call for justice until the next incident happens. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's just, why are you walking around the street? I didn't understand the yelling at the cops in mm -hmm. Wilmington, Delaware. Mm -hmm. I just didn't understand it. I do understand it from the perspective of venting and just yeah, being able to get it yeah. off. Mm -hmm. But like they destroyed like the the sign in front of the justice of the peace mm -hmm. thing. And then, you know, I understood the blocking off 95 because that was actually a smart thing to do. Mm -hmm. Because that made people, that got people's attention. Like, even in other states, that was like, oh, wow, protesters in Delaware shut down I-95. Because I-95 goes from Rhode Island to Florida. Mm -hmm. That's a big thing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that that made a difference. But walking around screaming at cops, no. Nah. Like I, I put on Facebook, you need to uh, engage the politicians that make up these rules. That can, can sit here and change the laws mm -hmm. to like you talk about, they can change the law to say, you know what, strict, strict, strict consequences for any police officer that's found to abuse their their power. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, another thing we wanted to talk about was uh, there was a gentleman who uh, was beaten up. I forget. Well, do you know what state that was? The bow and arrow guy and, and uh, Will. Will uh, uh, well, Marshall and Fred, have you seen this? We, you know, we like you to chime in. But there was a gentleman somewhere that claimed all he did, he got beat up. So this is the first part of the video. You Salt see. Lake City, Utah. Utah. Oh, oh. okay. My Speaking nephew's of in Utah. Malone. My nephew's in Utah. So, Speaking you know, of Carmelo. But this guy uh, had claimed that all he did was scream out all lives matter. First of all, if people are saying black lives matter and you come along and scream all lives matter, you're being an antagonist, number one. Why, why the hell do you feel the need to scream that? Ain't no, see, there was no white people hurting this. It, it was a black guy that got killed, okay? So, secondly, I'm going to read something video. on before you do that. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read. There was something that that somebody had made a a post that basically said screaming all lives matter while dismissing that black lives matter is the equivalent of your house and your neighborhood being on fire yeah and the fire truck coming and putting water on all the houses right like it just it serves no purpose. Sense, right? You only put water on the house that's, that's on fire. Right, right. So this guy said that he got beat up because he screamed out "All Lives Matter." Well, they show another video. The guy got from out the, with a bow and beginning. arrow. Okay, from the beginning, got out with a bow and arrow and was pointing it at people, and a bunch of black people jumped him and beat his ass. You know why are you out there pointing a bow and arrow at people? Honestly, he should get some kind of charge. Like, if you point a gun at someone. So, first so, of all, he has zero, if you look at when he actually has the bow and arrow. He has not nothing, a, not a not mark Not a mark on, on his face. Him. All that marks came from when he, and he got one shot off. I don't know what type of damage he did to anybody. Me either, but they beat the shit out of <laughs> They did, definitely. And like, you couldn't. Have you ever seen the video of uh, them killing Muammar Gaddafi? Like no. He got mob killed. No, like, they were trying to take him to jail, and they beat the shit out of him and killed him. Mm, nice. That's 
it immediately reminded me of that. Yeah. So they had, and we, like we talked about, we said, "Hey, anybody there with a gun, I would have let off on him." Right. You you could kill me with a yeah, bow and arrow. Yeah, yeah, you can kill. Nah. You know, he's lucky he didn't get shot. He's lucky that he walked away from the incident because that they allowed that, him to sit there and get interviewed after the fact. Yeah. Because well, if he did that shit to me, I would have still been whipping his ass, his ass. when <laughs> when he, reporters he came. Just had hold on, hold on! Don't ask him this question yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, black eyes and stuff. And he was okay. He was like, the reason why they did this because I screamed out All Lives Matter. And you come to find out it was a lie. There's white people showing up that are breaking and looting stuff in these black neighborhoods. Okay? And uh, some of them are alleged some of them police. Are ran out. Yeah, some of them are alleged police. There was a guy with a whole hazmat suit on. They said he was a cop. You no, know? his wife identified him. She said, that's my gas mask. Mm. Oh, and didn't um, the cops yeah, the umbrella. divorce him? Or, or, uh, she filed for filed, divorce. Yeah, filed for divorce. But yeah. one of the other things I heard is the guy that was standing in front of, in the incident, the he's um, the Asian guy. That's his brother-in-law. That's his wife's brother. Mm, okay. They have, they're both of Hmong descent. I don't know if you know Hmong's. Mungs were in that movie with Clint Eastwood. They they highlighted the Asian community of Mungs H M O N G. Oh, Gran Torino. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they were they're of Mung descent. They live right there, and his name is similar, if not uh, the same, as I hers. I can't tell who the last person is that came in. But I can't see the picture from here. Oh, that's James. What's going on, James? But yeah. So. <clears throat> Yeah, so it's very unfortunate, and if this thing continues to happen, what it's going to do is drive away. Just imagine the, imagine the next incident. Yeah. yeah. Like, if we're already here, mm -hmm. what happens with the next incident? Like, that's just going to boil everything over. And and if you look at a lot of the the videos that they're showing protesters looting, they're, yeah. they're not even protesters. So, and I hate the protesters that. aren't yeah. looting. Yeah. Dickheads are looting. Right. And, and real quick, if I can chime in on that. To me, you know, the looting, you're not looting because you're doing it in honor of George Floyd. Mm. You're looting to gain something. You're taking advantage of the situation. Like here in Delaware, it's all young something. kids. So. You know, and here's my thing. If you're looting food because you're hungry, that's one thing. Okay? But I hear people talk about, yo, give me some sneak... Give me I'm some sneaks. I'm pretty sure. Like, yeah, so um, looting and protesting are two different things. Yeah. Um, protesters aren't looters, but loot looters can be protesters. Mm -hmm. um, I understand that as a form of venting a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I think in Minnesota... And I can accept it more than the looting in Delaware and Ryan. Yeah, in Delaware. somewhere, yeah. Um, if the incident would have happened in Delaware, and you know, yeah, I would have understood. But you know, for this incident, I understand the anger. I don't yeah, understand I mean. how the taking anger. a pair of sneakers or a vacuum cleaner or a stereo or a TV is helping your cause or in honor of George Floyd. Because mm -hmm. then you're giving those shithead people that. Or like, and you look at them, they're thug, yeah. thugs, the animals, and all this. You're Your just giving them. The president was the first person to come out and say, uh, these thugs. Yeah, but you know what he said up. in Charlottesville? Motherfucker! You know what he said in Charlottesville? Oh, I'm up. He said, those are good people. Oh, Forget uh, even you that. You want to get it verbatim? Forget even that. No, okay. no, I'm not even. Oh, they, uh, yeah. So these thugs are dishonoring the memory of George Floyd. I won't let that happen. Just spoke to Governor Tim Waltz and told him the military is with him in all, in all the way. Any difficulty, and we will assume control. But when the looting starts, the shooting starts. Number one, there was looting, but no shooting. Right. So, again, empty bullshit from an empty head. Mm -hmm. But uh, at the beginning of this month, uh, when there were people, white people, with, with guns storming the capitals standing like literally semi-automatic rifles mm -hmm. storming the capital mm -hmm. the governor of michigan should give a little 
and put out the fire. These are very good people, but they're angry. They want their lives back again safely. See them, talk to them, and make a deal. Make a deal. Ain't that some shit. Make a deal. How about we make a deal that you don't kill no more black men? Right. And, and <laughs> How about we make that deal? Let's go back to Charlottesville. He said there's good people on both sides. When it was people running people over with cars and shit. People out there with tiki torches and whatnot. This is driving a wedge in the country. This is not doing a lot for race relations at all. What, I, you're, what they're going to do is they're going to incite a race war. A race war is coming. I've had this conversation with people. They think I'm joking. I'm not saying at any point I want that to happen. Right. But this is going to this happen. This is the reality of it. Bullshit keeps going on. I, so politicians, you're not doing your fucking job. I can tell you now, and that's why I made the statement earlier. Uh, what did Malcolm X say something about this thing is a powder keg mm -hmm. and it's about to explode? Yep. It, it is about to get, explode. If yeah. there's another incident that's similar to this, mm. like he said earlier, arm yourself because mm. it's going to come down to that. Yeah. It just is. And it's unfortunate. It's nothing that anybody wants. There, and, and for every one of the, the cool-ass white people out there, I'm half white myself, but for every one of y'all, look, we know it's not y'all. And you, mm. you, you the ones that understand the message and got the message it's the fucking assholes that don't mm -hmm. that don't hear the message mm -hmm. there's a girl on my facebook well yeah so i saw she commented on the uh protesters on 95 i swear to god i will run y'all down if it comes between you and my kids like first of all there's a line of police mm -hmm. in front of the protesters right. protecting them uh, from any oncoming traffic. And she even went so far as to say, not only will I run you down, let me, let me read exactly what this girl said. I'm telling you now, I will hit you with my truck. Then you will be shot. Ridiculous. Protest like normal fucking people, not animals. How did normal said people? something about when cops are outnumbered. The cops are out there protecting the protest. What are you how, talking about? How do you protest normally? Like, what's a normal protest? I don't know, because apparently you can't even is it, is go it, down on one knee to protest peacefully. Exactly. <laughs> is, it, is it normal for a cop to sit on somebody's neck for nine minutes? You want to talk about normalities, but see, and that's the thing we got to stop doing too. Or something's, listen, this is to everybody, black or white, okay? If something is fucked up, it is fucked up. Doesn't matter what side it's coming from, who it's coming from. Wrong is wrong, right is right. Mm -hmm. And we have to learn that. That no matter who you are, no matter how much I might respect Cam, my brother right here. If he's wrong, I'm going to tell him he's wrong. He's going to do the same for me. You know, and that's just caring about each other and honesty. You know what I mean? I don't want him to go do the wrong thing and vice versa. As simple as that. We got to it's cut out simple, this shit. It's a, it's a simple thing. Mm-hmm. As a friend, as even communicating the message, we have to tell each other what you need to know and not what you want to hear. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's as simple as that. And that is exactly your state. Like, if there's something, like, oh, okay, you yeah. know, is it going to bother me? Is my ego going to twinge a little bit because I'm not being told what I want to hear? Of course, that's natural in any human yeah, being. of course. Mm -hmm. But ultimately. Especially if you feel like you're right, you know. But ultimately, if someone's looking out for your best interest, and you can follow their advice or whatever if you want, yeah. you can take it or you, or you cannot take it. Mm. But hey, Marshall, is anything going on um, in your area where you're from? I'm I'm just curious to know. James, anything in in in, in Jersey going on uh, as far as? Uh, Probably not. I don't think it would in your area. I might be wrong, but, you know, just curious to know. Okay. Yes. What I 
Fangadus? No, it's no. like some automated. Uh, uh, it's actually it's for uh, you know they have that Christina School District referendum thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're yeah. trying to get everybody to vote for that on June night. Yeah, just everybody. Which is actually important. I mean, yeah, it could cut out all high school sports from Christina School District. Oh wow! You imagine Glasgow, Newark, Christiana not having Can't. basketball, football team. Can't. That'd be crazy. But um. Yeah, just just protect yourselves. Like I said, man, you know, arm yourselves. Arm yourselves and educate yourselves. Of the, that's very important. That's problem. It's problematic when mm-hmm. when you don't understand the issue. Mm-hmm. Like like, you know, what I said earlier. I didn't understand yelling at cops. I understand the venting aspect of it, but what what is it solving? Uh, I think. Um, if you use the metaphor, you know, you, you, you rip out roots, you dig deep to rip out roots. Mm-hmm. If you're killing the flowers on on the damn tree, which is what looting and all that other stuff, you're just killing the flowers, the good parts, right. people's businesses, uh, promoting the like violent interactions. That, that's not helpful. Yeah, if I- you're if you're uh, if you're going to the politicians and you're saying, you know what, look, we will vote your ass out, mm-hmm. and and I know it's cliche to say vote and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. There's many ways to defend yourself. You can defend yourself with a vote. You can defend yourself physically. You can defend yourself intellectually. But the protests aren't happening where they need to happen, mm-hmm. and that's. Ultimately, cops are spokes on a wheel. No, no, no real way that it can affect change. They're literally just spokes on the wheel. We're just going to go do what we do, blah, blah, blah. You get all, like, your community leaders or whatever involved with the politicians, the police chiefs, and, and all this other shit. And you don't have a president that's saying, hey, you don't even have to put your hand on the head when you put them in the car. Just rough them up. Just rough them up, right. And they got a nerve to say after he said the shooting looting and they told him that came from a racist police chief. Oh, I didn't mean to incite violence. Well, you you did it from the jump with the whole just knock their heads or whatever, whatever. Right. You know, listen, the main thing you got to remember. Don't piss on my head and tell me it's raining because that's what that dude does. These people are human, okay? People get arrested. If the person's not resisting, there is no need to rough anybody up. Get them in the car or whatever. Now, granted, if it's a thing where they're resisting and a cop has to defend himself, I'm all for that. Listen, there are situations I've seen online where, in a situation, I'm like, I would have shot that guy, too. You Here's where I'll what disagree I'm with saying? you. Yeah. Here's where I'll disagree with you. Mm. Dylan Roof walked into a church, shot nine people. Mm. Not only did they arrest him without incident. Oh no, they did the bullshit. They put a vest no, on. No, they put a vest. They, yes, took they him to get food. Stopped at Burger King on the way. Mm-hmm. That's bullshit. Yeah. Well, what, what are you disagreeing with what I said? Because I don't. I'm not saying that you'd be overly I'm nice to him. Disagreeing with and... with the premise that uh, just. Because there's just different strokes depending on who you are. Well, so there, mm. obviously they can arrest people without incident because they do it. They did, there's pictures them. of, of yeah. not just him, other uh, non minorities that they're sitting there putting water in the mouth for them. Um, and, and like, come on. And, and here's a statistic yeah. that they will always, always throw at you, but it's contextually not accurate. Mm. More whites are killed by police officers in the United States than blacks. Which is a true statement. Mm-hmm. It's 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 a true statistic. But when you look at per capita, mm-hmm. so if, if you equalize the numbers, so if there was just as many blacks in the United States as there were whites, mm-hmm. then the numbers totally skew the bit, other yeah. way. Mm-hmm. So they like to use that as a defense. Oh, of course. Yeah. And it's not because they always make it out of context. Mm-hmm. And that's where the, what I said, educate yourself comes in. Mm-hmm. 
Because if you went and researched that, you would say, oh, shit, yeah, more white people killed by cops than, than blacks. Right. Without looking further because into it and seeing get, what yeah. the statistic actually means. But that's that because we capita. live in a lazy country, too. Yes. Where technology has made it where you don't, you can do it all from your phone mm -hmm. and it gives you a piece. And you just, this, everything the, is taken. First story. sentence. Right. So. Because that's what you're searching for. Yeah. Are more whites, let, let's do an experiment. Okay. You, I tell you what, while you're doing the experiment, give me a second. I'll be right back, folks. But please, the vanilla gorilla is going to take care of you. So, what I just looked up, uh, according to a study done in 2019, African Americans are 2.5 times more likely to be killed by police than white people. For black women, the rate is 1.4 times more likely. Um, just using for the verify. Um, the second closest to that group of uh, the African Americans is American uh, Indians, then Latinos. The, the whites are not even close. And the lowest uh, risk group, I guess, would be Asian Pacific Islanders. Um, Many people ask whether black or white citizens are more likely to be shot and why, if you live in a county that has a lot of white people committing crimes, white people are more likely to be shot. Um, so, yeah, so I just read uh, African Americans, 2.5 times more likely to be shot by the, killed by the police. So it's not even close. You have to contextualize it in order for it to make sense. Yeah. But... I mean, it just is. We're in a bad place, man. We're, we're in a like bad place. Like, there's that video. Did, did you see the, the one video of the guy who has his hands on his head, turns around for the officers, and then the other officer comes behind him and tries to drop kick him? Nah, I didn't see that one. But do you remember a while ago, there was a, a black gentleman that was taking care of an autistic kid? Yes. And he laid down with his room. hands up, and he still got shot? Yep. Yeah. He shot him. This is a, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. The videos I, that I, we're not seeing are the videos that, um, that, uh, of the brutality, even in reaction to the protests from the police. Mm -hmm. Like they're, like, like this video. Hmm. Yeah, I, I did hear about that. Yeah, I mean, it, it, they, they've shown over and over that none Just of toss this... that little girl. None of this is going to change. Arm yourselves. Arm yourselves oh, so you that you can still carry. Hands on the head. Yeah. So now you have baited him into resistance. Now, of course, he is resistant. You just kicked me in the back. Right. Hands on the head. Totally compliant, right? Yeah. One comes from the side, the other swings around the back, and instead of the one just grabbing his arm, and putting yeah, him in handcuffs. It's like he they jumped him out there. Drop kick him in drop his back. Drop kicked him, he and turned what around he, like, what what's his wrong reaction with supposed you? to be? Right. That's and what I don't know. What is, what is my reaction? You just kicked me. I'm, I'm complying with my hands on the head. I turn to face away from you so that you can put me under arrest. Mm -hmm. And you drop kick me in the back? Yeah. On some fucking... <laughs> Yo... And now you got resistant arrest because now you, yeah, you baited me into resistant arrest. Right. Yeah, hell yeah, I'm resistant. Right, and I think that I think resistant is now a felony. I don't think it was uh, before. I think it's a felony. Now. I check what it is and don't know. Yeah. 
resisting arrest with force is a felony. Res okay. Just regular resisting it's, arrest is not. But you know that can be spent at any time. So they're going to make it It's a basically a felony. So They're going to make it a felony. Go. Yeah. There you go. But yeah, man. You know, you can't just deal with COVID-19. You got to deal with uh, uh, yeah. hoping that you can uh, get arrested, without, arrested get killed. without getting killed. And that's what I put. I put, you know, at my size, like they gonna go all out with me, yeah. all out, <laughs> tease them. There's assumptions being made without actual fact, and the assumption is that when I do this to you, you're gonna try to kill me. So before you even get the chance to even flinch, we're gonna do everything in our power to basically kill you. Now, because here's the hard thing about me, and and. You know, I worked, when I worked in the detention center, you have handcuff training and all that stuff. Mm. Because of my wide shoulders, mm -hmm. my hands don't connect in my back. Right. So you can't handcuff me. Right. You have to do, like, the double cuffs. So you need two sets of cuffs, and you would cuff my wrist and then cuff the cuffs to the other one. Just because uh, I, they just don't bend back that way. It would be excruciating painful or separate my shoulders or, or whatever it just doesn't work so you know if I ever get arrested I have no choice but to comply because you throw handcuffs on me it's gonna probably snap my shoulder because right. that's your shoulder is a very easy it's a ball and socket joint hmm. and it's literally one of those it's a small ball and socket joint whereas your hip is a huge ball and socket joint mm -hmm. so you just figure you got this hmm. and when it moves yeah. See how easy it can come out. That's literally how it works. Mm. So when you bend it, and that's why people have shoulder injuries and bad shoulder injuries. Because mm. it's just easy. You don't see guys doing crazy weights in the gym with shoulders because it's, you can easily injure it. So. Well, on that note. Yeah, on that note, um, like, hey. Take care of yourself. Man. Yeah. Take care of yourself. You know, things things are going to get a lot crazier, man. I thought it was just going to be because of the COVID nineteen. It doesn't look like mm -hmm. that. You know, well, I heard the the, and this is where I, I'm not educated enough. But there was a woman that was killed recently by police. Mm -hmm. Brianna something brother. I don't know, uh, Christine. If you know what he's talking about, can you comment on that? But I, I did hear that the FBI. It's doing an investigation into the police department for that particular one. Um, See, and somebody, the one thing I hate is when the police commit a crime, law enforcement investigates. Come on, man. That's like somebody coming to me, hey, Mark, yeah, you, got the ability, you got the ability to keep uh, your boy Cam from going to jail or, you know, staying out of jail. Of course, I'm a, you know, unless you did something, you know, unimaginable. I'd be like, nah, you know, he didn't do it. <laughs> He's good to go, you know. Right, so you, so this, this woman was killed in her own home. Was that in Texas? Louisville, Kentucky. Louisville. Okay, so this is the second lady to get killed in her home recently. There was a lady in Texas that came to the window, and the guy said, uh, I forget what he said. He said two things to her and just emptied through her window and killed her. She was a certified her neighbor, EMT. Oh, good. Her neighbor, a, a black gentleman, had called and said, look, the door is open to her house and the light's on. I'm concerned. They interviewed him after she was killed. And he said, you know, I really wish I didn't call the cops. I didn't mean for her to get... I was just concerned mm. as a neighbor. You know, and, and I mean, that's a shame, man. That's a shame because... You know, if he could take back making that phone call, I'm pretty sure he would have, you know. But, yeah, that's the second lady I've heard getting killed in her own home. Now, what what's the whole story with that? I'm sorry. All right. So, uh, on the night Taylor was killed, officers were serve, serving a no-knock search warrant in the narcotics investigation. Yeah. Police have since said the knock, officers knocked and announced themselves before entering. Uh, lawyers for uh, Taylor's family and her boyfriend, who I guess was the guy there, and was with Taylor that night, said they did not. He said he thought he was witnessing a home invasion, environment, 
prompting him to pick up his gun and fire a shot that hit an officer in the leg after a biting ram plowed through the apartment's door. Police responded by firing more than 20 times. Taylor was hit by eight of those rounds. Uh, you could look through one of the bullet holes and see into the next door apartment. No drugs were found. Taylor, so they could have killed somebody in that other apartment. Taylor died. Walker was arrested and charged with attempted murder and first degree assault. Three officers involved reassigned pending investigation. Uh, blah, 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 blah. I'm surprised the cops don't use hollow points though. It, it, they that cheap, they let them use full metal jackets and shoot. <laughs> Police observed the car regularly operated by two suspect drug dealers make frequent trips from a drug dealing trap house near the city center to Taylor's home more than 10 miles away. Uh, according to the warrant, police believe one of the suspected dealers was keeping either drugs or money in Thanks, Taylor's Sydney. home. Uh, the lawyer said that neighbors in the building can attest that the police did not knock or announce themselves. Um, And officers involved in serving the warrant didn't wear body cams. Shocker. Mm. Uh, don't believe the police were were just people committing the it. So if you are a drug dealer or something, and your door suddenly explodes in, what you gonna do? You. I figure somebody's trying to trying to rob you. Trying to, what, what is he supposed to do? Listen, bro. If somebody knocks on your door, whether they're police or not, what you doing? Listen. Wait to hear, hey, it's us, the police. I'm not a oh. drug dealer. And if somebody kicks in my house, guess what I'm doing? The first thing. Lighten their ass I'm up. I'm shooting. I'm shooting. And, and you don't know which one I'm going to pick up and shoot with. That, but that's what I'm saying. <laughs> what are you supposed to do? No not search warrant in a drug house, a suspected drug house. Mm. What do you think is going to happen? They're going to open fire. It's an apartment. They can't yeah. flush the drugs. Right. Guns, money. Well, the first thing you thinking, you're not thinking the cop. You thinking it's a rival. Exactly. Yeah. So what was he expected to do? No. no. So it was. It was first. It was the the kid that was jogging. Mm -hmm. Then it was this girl. Mm -hmm. Now it was George Floyd. Oh, in all fairness, he was killed by a former. Yeah, that dude was a former police officer. Yeah. Oh, that's when uh, you got the phone call. No, I, I don't know oh, what no. that's about. Oh. I'm going to have to call him right after this. I don't know what that's about. But anyway, on that note, yeah, uh, we're going to wrap this there. up. Uh, go feed my fat face. We thank you all for joining in, tuning in. Um, yeah, and I, I just want to make sure, you know, if you are one of the white people, and, and I say... I kind of hate that term, white people. If you are white and you tuned in, um, chances are you are not one of those people that that um, would be offended because it's not a. Um, well, it's not an attack on yours. It's attack an attack on bad police officers. On bad police officers. On bad police officers. There's good ones too. And and. And the, it's also a little bit systematic, right? Like, um, there is a concern with some of the policies and et cetera of um, what the police are allowed to do. Mm. But, yeah, so we're all about, you know, um, we are NWA, fuck the police. Um, which is ironic because they had a lot of off-duty cops protecting them as as, uh, right. as bodyguards. But, um, yeah, we're not screw whitey or, or screw the police and, and all that. That's, that's not the way this works, and, you know, aside from the fact that I'm half white myself. Yeah, this is about right and wrong. Yeah, right and wrong are the only two things. And unfortunately, right and wrong here sometimes gets divided in race. But, you know... J j 
I think there was a video just surfaced of a black cop choking a black kid, like both hands around the neck. So, again, and um, if it was, a, if it it's was about a, the police. If the same situation happened, okay, and it was a black officer on a white gentleman, I'd be saying it's jacked up just like uh, this one is. Except for the fact that it's it's less frequent. And that's right. where in the problem lies. Right. Like, yeah, right. of course it happens. Are there black officers that that abuse uh, white criminals or, or white suspects? Absolutely. But it just seems to be skewed in a... In a it happens way more often. In a way, way different frequency mm. that um, blacks are being killed. And obviously the statistics that I just looked up, you know, 2.5 more times likely. So... Whether a, a, a black cop shoots the, the next person or a white cop, it's, it's still is a systematic problem of. Um, Did you see that? Email? Yeah. <laughs> systematic problem of of just cops abuse of cops. So yeah. educate yourselves. Most definitely arm yourselves, um, and not to be out shooting people, but it's your right. Li literally, your right yeah, as you an American citizen. Yourself. To protect yourself mm -hmm. from enemies, foreign and domestic. domestic. Mm -hmm. and domestic includes the government. Mm -hmm. uh, it, matter of fact, since we have my phone, this will be the last time we have my phone. Let me end this by reading the Second Amendment. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. That is the Second Amendment. But it is infringed all the time because they change what you can and can't have almost on a yearly basis. You know, so it's funny that, that it says that, but there's seems to be... Well, I mean, there's always... But I understand that. Yeah. I understand that as there's amendments. Like, um, I, I just was reading part of it. Yeah. Where the Supreme Court in 1939 um, determined that Congress could regulate a sawed-off shotgun. Yeah, yeah you got a, um, a shortened shotgun barrel. You got to get what they call a tax stamp. Mm -hmm. um, because the, the problem is not the gun itself. It's people being able to hide it. Yeah, and that was a big problem with that. Mm -hmm. But... Um, was that the yeah that was it alright folks we are out, out of here. here see you next week see I'll be back on live my punishment is up yeah so maybe we'll we'll do a little something next week oh no I got something good no no I got something good, no, 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 good. alright we're gonna hold that close to the chest oh I got something <laughs> alright folks we'll see y'all next week